the first thing I'm probably gonna do is have a sleepover, like a huge sleepover with all my friends. Um, like some parties, like a pool party or something. Ten-year-old Maya Huber is one of more than 2,000 American children who've received two doses of the BioNTech-Pfizer vaccine. Initial findings from a study of 5 to 11-year-olds show that the vaccination is effective and safe. Young children are already getting the jab in other countries too, in Cuba with a homegrown serum, as well as China and Cambodia, where they're getting the Sinovac inoculation. Meanwhile, in Europe, the vaccination of teenagers is making headway. Here, too, data from the US were decisive. They show that the benefits of vaccination outweigh the risk of very rare vaccine side effects. Welcome to our COVID-19 special. I'm Monica Jones. Thanks for joining us. Now, COVID-19 is primarily a respiratory infection that attacks our lungs. Two years into the pandemic, we know that the virus can also harm other organs, including our heart. Getting vaccinated to protect yourself and others should be the obvious answer. But now a study in the US claims that the jab could be worse than the disease, at least for teenagers. For many teenagers, getting vaccinated against COVID-19 is a cause for celebration. But one U.S. study appears to suggest teenage boys who have the Pfizer vaccine have an increased risk of developing an inflammation of the heart muscle. Symptoms of myocarditis include a stabbing pain or a tightness in the chest, shortness of breath when walking and resting, and flu-like symptoms like a high temperature, tiredness and fatigue. It can also include heart palpitations. The study found that between January and June this year, rates of adverse cardiac events for boys aged 12 to 15 after their second dose of a Pfizer vaccine was just over 162 per million. This is nearly four times the number of otherwise healthy unvaccinated teenagers who'd be expected to end up in hospital with COVID-19 over a similar time period. The incidence in the study works out as 16.2 cases of myocarditis per 100,000 people. That's pretty much bang on average for the general population. And the paper has some limitations. The research hasn't yet been reviewed by the scientific community. The number of people in the study at 257 is enough to be interesting, but not enough to be groundbreaking. COVID itself can cause myocarditis too. The study of 240,000 people published in the New England Journal of Medicine found being infected with the coronavirus was associated with 11 cases of the condition per 100,000 people. That same paper found for all age ranges being Pfizer vaccinated was linked to 2.7 cases per 100,000 people. The link between vaccinating teenagers and contracting myocarditis isn't exactly clear. But with more data on the way following the UK's recent move to offer COVID vaccines to 12 to 15 year olds, it's likely that will change in the coming months. Now, Dr. Jakob Arman is attending physician and pediatric infectious disease and critical care specialist at the University Children's Hospital in Dresden. He joins us now. Good to have you with us. Uh, I'd like to hear your opinion. What do you make of that US study suggesting that teenage boys who have the Pfizer vaccine have an increased risk of developing an inflammation of the heart muscle? Well, um, it shows that there's no medical intervention, intervention without any risk. And it also shows that the risks depend on different factors, gender and age being one of them. So having a risk profile for 20 to 40 year old women doesn't mean that it's the same for 12 to 15 year old boys. So you do need to get those numbers and you need to weigh the risk and benefits for each and every age group um, and gender in this case. The data is actually not that surprising. There was a CDC update, I think, four to six weeks ago that basically showed a similar magnitude of um, myocarditis after the second um, dose of uh, BioNTech-Pfizer um, in adolescents. The, the difference in the study now is that they focus on primarily healthy kids. So with the CDC update, you always got the number of myocarditis compared to the ICU admissions and hospitalization, but those included the um, adolescents with comorbidities as well. 
And so there's no real discussion that those kids will benefit from the vaccine. The oh, okay. question is if a primarily healthy kid will also benefit from the vaccine. But, but does it have anything to do with the fact that it's an mRNA vaccine? Because the study only looked at Pfizer vaccines. So we do see similar rates of myocarditis with Moderna, which also is an mRNA vaccine. So it seems that those vaccines have a increased risk of myocarditis. Given that the um, other vaccines, at least in the US and Europe, are not approved for this age group, we don't really have data on the side effects of um, AstraZeneca or Johnson and Johnson in this age group. Now, of course, you just said it's also about balancing the risk. In the US, we hear the children now make up one in five new COVID cases. There were some 30,000 kids hospitalized in August, and uh, there were 10 times more unvaccinated kids in hospital than vaccinated ones. Um, how to balance the risk of vaccine side effects and a serious infection? So, again, I think the number is not really fair because not every kid had a chance to be vaccinated. So at this point, um, especially in the age group up to 12 years of age, you basically only have unvaccinated kids. So all those kids will be unvaccinated if they go to the hospital. Um, but more importantly, um, not every admission um, from a child who is infected with SARS-CoV-2 means that he's admitted due to his infection. So we, in Germany, we have a national registry for all hospitalized children. And we see that 80% of the children who are admitted to the hospital and have a um, infection with SARS-CoV-2 are not in the hospital due to the infection. They are there for completely different reasons and just happen to be infected. And I don't know the exact number in the United States, but it will be similar. So mm. from the 30,000 kids who are admitted, only a small percentage is actually admitted due to the infection. And therefore, you really have to say, um, even with those numbers, a primarily healthy kid has a minimal risk of severe COVID-19. Nevertheless, Pfizer this week said that the vaccine is safe also for 5 to 11-year-olds. Uh, that's an age group that you're looking at, at kindergartens in particular. Would you advise parents to get their little ones vaccinated now? So, I mean, we have to see the data. So far, we only have the press release. Um, but regardless, the, the study includes about 5,000 kids. 2,500 got the vaccine, 2,500 got the placebo. What this means is we can make assumptions on risks that happen in roughly 1 in 2,500 kids. The risk of severe disease in this age group is much, 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 much lower. So initially, I would not recommend a healthy five-year-old to get vaccinated. If you have comorbidities, for example, if this kid has trisomy 21, yes, should get vaccinated. But if it's a healthy kid, I would wait until we have more data, until we, until we have the chance to see rare side effects like myocarditis and then make um, a call on right. who benefits from the vaccine and who does not. That's a straightforward answer there from Dr. Jakob Armann from the University Children's Hospital in Dresden. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. And let's stay with vaccine side effects a little longer because that's also one of your questions. Let's ask Derek. How do side effects caused by vaccines differ from symptoms that occur when naturally catching the disease? Pretty much all of the vaccines being administered in, in various parts of the world so far are what they call reactogenic to a greater or lesser extent. Now that technical term just means that they often cause side effects, usually mild ones, like, like maybe some pain or some swelling at the injection site. Although sometimes they do provoke also greater discomfort. Um, Topping lists of other common side effects that are regularly reported are, are fatigue, um, headache, fever, chills, and, and just generally feeling kind of achy. Um, some studies have shown that up to two thirds of all recipients have one or more of those sorts of side effects soon after vaccination. Um, they're more common among women than they are among men. And they also appear more often in younger recipients than they do in the elderly. More serious side effects like anaphylactic shock uh, can also occur, but they're extremely rare. 
Many of those side effects are similar to symptoms that people report when they catch COVID-19. Um, their fever and chills are also common, as is fatigue and, and aching joints. And headaches are also a regular occurrence with COVID-19. Uh, one young member of my family who caught the virus felt fine in most ways, but had a headache that persisted for days. But there are also COVID-19 symptoms that are distinct from vaccine side effects. For instance, um, vaccines don't cause you to lose your sense of smell or taste, and they don't cause respiratory issues uh, like coughing. It's also important to note here that experts are reporting that the Delta variant appears to often provoke more cold-like symptoms that earlier variants of the virus didn't, like a runny nose or, or a sore throat. Vaccines won't cause those either. But probably the most important difference between vaccine side effects and disease symptoms is that vaccine side effects last at most a day or two, while symptoms caused by COVID-19 continue to be felt by some long COVID patients for months. Derek Williams there. Well, congratulations to the trio who developed the BioNTech-Pfizer vaccine. BioNTech co-founders Oslem Tureci and Ugur Sahin, as well as biochemist Katalin Kariko, who have been awarded Germany's top medical research prize, the Paul Ehrlich and Ludwig Darmstädter Prize. And that's our show for today. If you'd like more information on any of our stories, you can find them on our website, dw.com slash COVID. We'll be back again tomorrow at the same time. Hope to see you then.